to another episode of socal watch review this is episode nine i am miguel on the other line we got pp how's it going yo what's going on P not Rocks much in the building in the building socal watch review podcast back in effect there you go doing this damn thing early in the morning now speaking of early in the morning i'm in the west coast i'm in california and we had a little time change over here so we went back an hour what about you p i, I don't yeah, think we're we went back an hour too Oh, you did as well. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I just that's that's how much I know things on here in the U.S. But yeah, uh, yeah no. Speaking of uh, time change, we also got a very special guest on the line. We got Mr. Matthew from Chronomat. How's it going, Matthew? I'm doing well, thanks. Now, do you want me to call you Matthew? You want me to call you Matt? Or what do you? Uh... Either is really good. I've been called both my entire life, pretty much. <laughs> I just don't want to sound like your parents and call you Matthew and you'd be like, hey, it's kind of weird. You're my friend. Don't call me that. <laughs> so for those that don't know you, uh, let me, uh, the, Matthew actually, or Matt runs a YouTube channel called Chronomat. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell us, tell us a little bit about, about you and about the channel. So yeah, I have a channel called Chronomat. I do a lot of celebrity watch collections. That's pretty much how I got started. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, I guess. Okay. No, sounds good. So what is it about celebrities? Like, why why focus on celebrities rather than talk about watches and, and the way that we all talk about watches? I just thought that it was like, well, I saw on the Theo and Harris channel a couple of years ago, they did a video on Justin Bieber, and I just thought it was really cool. And I just thought it was a more general way. It appeals to a wider demographic, I would say. It's not so niche. Yeah, I, you know what? I I didn't even think about that. P, what do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, that's a, a nice perspective. What did Justin Bieber's collection look like, though? It was a that's lot of Cartier's. Garbage. Really no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, this this Bieber guy, he, uh, I know, Justin Bieber, he just picked up a crazy AP, right? Like a vintage piece? Yeah, it was a, it was a vintage gold AP Royal Oak with a gray dial, a slate gray dial. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. Yeah, no respect to him. I, I know I got him a lot of a lot of kudos in the watch industry. And people were talking about it. I remember Yahoo or TMZ. Somebody had it. Not that I, <laughs> not, I don't go to TMZ. <laughs> okay. Um, anyways, let's get started with this. So uh, you are a younger guy, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know if you mind telling the, the audience how old you are, because I, I think I find that very fascinating. I'm, I turned 19 two months ago. That's mm. crazy. That's crazy. Well, happy late birthday. I know I told you happy birthday already, but uh, happy late birthday. Uh, and happy you're in college? Late. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> and you're in college, yeah? Yeah, I'm second year. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And to all the listeners, uh, you just want to let them know where you're located. You're in Canada, right? Yeah, I'm in British Columbia. Awesome. Very awesome. close to Vancouver. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful place. Little little cold there now, I'm assuming. Yeah. It's getting, <laughs> yeah, it's getting a little crazy. But no, I, I there's a lot of things here that P and I found extremely fascinating. I mean, number one, how old you are and you're into watches, which is crazy. I mean, a lot of us, you know, are into watches when we we're younger because of our parents or whatever, you know, cousins. But we're not into watches how we're into watches now and you are. Uh, and you've been for a few years. So what what was that spark for you? Was it a gift from somebody or why why did you get into watches so much i was about 10 years old and my grandpa gave me his vintage omega seamaster it was like a little 33 millimeter gold piece and that just sparked it i guess <laughs> that's awesome so when did you actually get into watches like heavy probably like... when i was about 14 15 so oh years. wow so you've been in this game for a while now it's i think you've been in this longer than than i have i don't know about <laughs> p <pee>, but uh <laughs> right that's yeah, that's man. pretty that's pretty insane but uh i guess you know something that that we were kind of discussing and we really wanted to ask you that kind of piqued our interest is 
you know, you're you're a young guy, and you're in this older guy's hobby, really. Let's call it what it is. You know, a lot of people in, yeah. in this game are in the 40s and their 30s, maybe late 20s, but not as young as you are. Um, do you find, and you are in college, so do you find yourself just being looked at by your friends or your peers a little different just because you're so into this and you run a YouTube channel? Um, well, kind of. I don't really... I kind of talked to my friends about it. I gave Stern Glass. It's a, a young brand started in Hamburg. They sent me a, a Stern Glass Circle, and I actually gave that to my friend just for the just like for the end of my video. So um, I don't know. I kind of rubbing off on my friends a little bit in that way. I guess you could say. <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah, I understand that. You know, because like as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I have a few friends that I've actually converted into watch guys, kind of, you know what I mean? And it, you can, people definitely uh, respect it for sure, for sure. I'm noticing. So That's crazy. Well, it sounds to me like you're keeping this very secret, Matt. <laughs> you're not going around the school telling everybody they have a YouTube channel and you oh, just God, want to no. keep it that way. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Just like, even if it wasn't about watches, no. Nah. <laughs> Oh, really? I didn't know that you were that private, but that's that's cool, I guess. You know, we can respect that. So I guess with that said, you gave that watch to your friend, but have you converted anybody else into watches aside from your school? I mean, just your family members or anybody else? Have you? I don't think anyone bes- like outside of my friend group, really. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Well, what do your parents think about all this? Because I know YouTube takes a long time, especially your videos. They're amazing, man. I mean... The editing and everything. I mean, the quality of your videos are incredible. Uh, so I know it takes a long time. Are they concerned at all? Like, oh, it's going to take away from your studies? Or No, they're actually really supportive about it. I, That's awesome. I, I, like, converted my basement into, like, kind of my studio. <laughs> I've taken up a lot of space down there. Well, that's super cool. So you still live at home. I thought you were on campus for whatever reason. You, oh, you're... no, I still live at home, yeah. You live at home. Oh, okay. Sounds good, man. No, and, and I know you have, we talked about this before, you have like a green screen or something, and you yeah, it's just film with us? It's, an, it's the actual set behind me. I just used the green screen because the lights would have reflected off of it, like the oh. frames behind me, so that just be really distracting. That's pretty cool, and, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but with this whole YouTube thing, one of your, one of your highlights, because I know you were super excited about this, was actually getting to do a video or a collab with Theo and Harris. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's interesting how that all that all happened. But have you been in touch with the guy since? Yeah, I've been in touch. Anna emailed me a couple of days ago. I still text Christian a decent amount. Well, that's cool. You guys uh, working on any uh, other projects or is that hush hush? I think that they're pretty busy with like they kind of revolutionized the website and the watches that they're selling. It's pretty insane now. So the yeah, right now. I agree. Well, the, the watches in their collection are, are obviously a lot. It's a different tier. But yeah. also, so they, since they partnered up with that um, jewelry store or whatever, they've been doing a lot of really cool. Really uh, high-end watches. Yeah, high-end watches. And I'm like, oh, wow. They, they, they're definitely stepping it up. Obviously, they're getting a the commission off of these things. So that's mm-hmm. good for them, you know, different revenue streams. So very well. All right. Um, what celebrity, in your opinion, has the best or worst collection? I was watching um, Houdinki, and I had saw uh, they had Prize on there from the Fuji's, and his watch collection I thought was excellent. He had like APs, and he had a vintage AP, he had all kind of stuff. So, um, who do you think has the best or the worst? Do you guys know who Frank Lampard is? Uh, I can't mm. say that I do. <laughs> no, the head coach of Chelsea, the football team. Oh. I don't follow soccer or football, no. whatever. <laughs> no, I think we... he, he has a really cool collection. It's like a bunch of grand complication for text. Mm. Okay. All right. So that would be cool. the best then. <laughs> yeah. What about the worst? Come on. <laughs> uh, you know Neymar? Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he really? has a lot of ugly watches. <laughs> You know, I, I think Ronaldo, uh, if I remember oh, correctly. Oh, yeah, that, that's... <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> well, 
Well, the the crazy thing, if, if you really think about it, is like money doesn't buy you class. These guys are yeah. filthy, filthy rich, and yeah, they, they they some of the things that they have is just hideous. It's just like just because it's expensive doesn't mean that it's good, right? So like that. <laughs> I don't know. Now, what it is. Sorry. <laughs> now, do you think that uh, although they may have great collections, do you think that some of these people are actual watch people that's in it for the hobby or more of a fashion type, you know, uh, enhancement look type of deal? Hmm. I feel like you can kind of tell if they're more into watches, dependent on obviously the watches that they have already in their collections. So, like, Frank Lampard, all the grand complications, he has a bunch of Rats of the Planet, stuff like that. I would hope that he wants to watch his, <laughs> right. unless he has, like, a stylist or something like that. But even then, they would have to be really in the know. Whereas, mm. if you look at someone else, if they just have, like, a bunch of stereotypical Royal Oaks offshores, just like the Rose Gold 5980, stuff like that, I feel like it's not so much, it's just more as an accessory. Okay. Well, who do you think uh, has more flex pieces than would it be, speaking of celebrities, would it be like a sports figure? Would it be like a Hollywood yeah. star? A lot of European football players have ugly watches. And they're all like, mm-hmm. Ronaldo has a bunch of pieces over a million dollars. He has like that <sighs> that pink diamond Frank Muller. Mm-hmm. Right. He also had like a, a 15 millimeter Breguet. Like... <laughs> Like, he has so many watches over a million dollars, but they're all so ugly, honestly. Well, then wow. it's, fair, it's fair to say, then, that the guy is not a watch guy. The guy yeah, just, like, keeps it. He's just, he's just a flex. He's just a yeah. flex move. Yeah, I know he has a crazy car collection, too, so... I yeah, don't know if he's a car guy, but... Bugattis. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Maybe he is a car guy. Well, here's, here's another celebrity for you. Uh, Floyd Mayweather. I mean... Flex. Flex. flex 100%. Flex. 100%. 100%. Like the but then, Jake, but then, billionaire's watch. Yeah, that's crazy. Right. But then we talk somebody like, um, what's her name? Uh, geez, I had to name this co this host lady. She has her own oh, show, Ellen? Ellen DeGeneres. I mean, yeah, come on. Do you, you know you, Amsterdam vintage watches? Yes, I saw that. I saw yeah, that. That's now. pretty cool. You, you know uh, that guy from Amsterdam Vintage Watches? He's actually friends with uh, with Cam, with Cameron Barr, the guy that we had in a previous episode from Craft and Taylor. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, they're they're friends. He actually hung out. Actually, when he came to LA to do that thing with Ellen, I think he stopped by his shop first because I saw it in his Instagram account, and then he posted it there. And then Cam put something like goals or something, so they they know each other. But that's incredible. What was it like a Daytona, right? Like solid gold I think Daytona. It was like a six two six four Paul Newman or something like that. It yeah, like a gold. It was a gold Paul Newman, and then in that reference, I remember because Adam Levine has the same watch. It's like super rare. It was That's very crazy. limited amount. That's crazy. I would love to see what's in Ellen's collection. Like all in all, you know, like I, I really wish she would come <laughs> out and just say, "Hey, this is everything that's my collection." Obviously, they don't because of a number of reasons, right? I think number one, they don't want to be robbed. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, but or- the amount of watches that have already been spotted, it's like insane. It is. It is. So, and and from what we know from Ellen and, and what we've seen from, let's say, John Mayer, because there's another heavy hitting guy. Mm-hmm. Who do you, who would you say has the better collection? I don't know. Right now, <laughs> uh-huh. like whenever you say John Mayer, the two pieces that I like immediately think of, he has rainbow. a couple of rainbow Daytonas, mm-hmm. and then he has a huge AP concept to tur- turbine on. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not That's a crazy. big fan of that concept it's a little yeah it's a it's a little uh in your face a little big yeah. but uh i don't know well speaking of celebrities and obviously this whole episode is going to be based on celebrities i, I really want to get your take on this so we were talking about uh brand ambassadors right and and mm-hmm. it hits and misses whatever but who in your opinion uh has the biggest impact when it when it comes to ambassadors would it be a sports figure a hollywood star a social media influencer well, I feel like brand ambassadors, they, like, majority of them are targeted towards widening a brand's demographic. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're t- kind of targeting the wrong demographic. Because I know Tudor has, like, David Beckham, Lady Gaga. That's right. not really targeting who is actually going to buy a Tudor. But I feel like uh, Risha Mill does a good job with this because their watches are not worn by older people. It's usually 
people in their 20s, really rich people. So I think that they, I don't know. <laughs> They're kind of targeting the correct demographic, I would say. Well, Rich, mm. Richard Meal, Richard Meal, what, however you want to pronounce it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but their brand ambassador is a uh, tennis player, right? They got like Rafael Nadal, they have Bubba Watson, they have, I don't remember his name, but it's a pink Richard Meal and I think it's a track star. It's a lot mm. of athletes. Do you think they should hire Drake as an ambassador? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would probably fit the targeted demographic. It would fit yeah. everywhere. Yeah, it would be, I think it would be smart. Sure. Well, the guy. Well, well, here's the thing. It wouldn't even feel like he's working for them because he has yeah, so he many of his personal it, right? right? right. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a perfect fit. They just they really should give it to him. Or, I mean, if you really want to make an impact, you try to get somebody like a Jay Z on your on your side, and I I think all the rappers would jump on that train real yeah. quick. <laughs> you think so? I, you, I mean, think? come on. I, I mean, know. Hove. Hey, hey, come on, P. Hove is. I'm not saying he's the greatest, obviously, but he's really good. Not only that, but he is an influence to a lot of these rappers, like and and a lot of people, because the guy being a billionaire, being married to Beyonce, whatever. I mean, come on, he is an influencer, whether you yeah. like it or not. I mean, he's he's looked upon as as the god, you know. So, do you guys? Yeah, remember? I, Sorry, yeah, but I, I I think Drake would be a better ambassador than Jay for this, really. I feel like currently, you know yeah. I mean, yeah, at the moment, yeah, you know. No, I agree, but I think any. Okay, so let, let's put it in perspective. So, what brand, <laughs> in you guys' opinion, would be a smart move to um, to uh, reach out to JC and say, "Hey, represent our brand." He has a Ooh. lot of APs. He does. Uh, wow. Yeah, I would say AP. I would say AP. Okay, so it's like from Richard Mail AP. All right. Yeah. Now, Matt, I, I I know you were gonna say something. I don't know if you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys remember Odell Beckham Jr. a couple weeks ago? He had that. Oh yeah. The eleven oh three McLaren, and then the fifty six oh two, and that, then the replica, yeah. and yep. yeah, <laughs> like that would, it would initially have been <laughs> a good partnership for Richard Mail, but then with the fake, and then Daniel Wellington. So, mm-hmm. do you, do you, have you guys followed the story since? Because I haven't. I'm, I'm I haven't, just really no. curious. No, no. Okay, I, I would just be really curious to see what what happened with Daniel with Daniel Wellington. If if it, their sales increase or if people outside of the watch world even cared or, or knew what happened, huh? I mean, I'm sure it increased. Okay. Okay. Well, it's, I it's, guess it's, I, it's I don't know people. Yeah. Well. It, anyways, I mean, it is. It, it, it created such a such a big chaos, right? And and it was in every news outlet and everything. I mean, the talk about marketing geniuses. I mean, that was awesome. But I'm pretty sure probably Richard Mail probably got upset, or maybe it helped <laughs> them. I mean, they they say any publicity is good publicity, so I guess, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh yeah. But sounds oh. yeah, very, very well with that. All right. Um. What's in your current watch collection? And what do you think your next watch will be? So I have, of course, the Seiko SKX. Mm. I have the SNK E209, which is the little field watch. And then I have my grandfather's Tudor, my other grandfather's vintage Omega Seamaster. Mm-hmm. And then, <clears throat> sorry, I got an Orient Bambino, which I wear, I think, the most. <coughs> Excuse me. And then for my grad gift, I actually got an Omega Seamaster Professional for my parents. Mm. It's beautiful. So Is like, it auto quartz? Yeah, uh, it's automatic. Awesome. So I've always just been into Omega, I think, because of how I started with watches. And I've always liked the uh, Speedmaster Professional, so I would hope to one day have one of those. Mm. Okay, cool. I guess what? that's what we were wondering, right? People are like, well, what's yeah. next for him? <laughs> right. What did you think about the uh, the James Bond release, the Omega Speedmaster? Uh, I didn't actually see that. Uh, it was probably, I know that a couple of them, they have the more wavy dials or like 007 plastic on the dial. I'm not a big fan of that. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that release was kind of crazy. We talked about it, right, P, like in yeah. one of our episodes. It was, uh, we liked it. Uh, I know it was a limited release and it sold out and there's a, a huge demand for them. But yeah, they, they kind of went all out on this watch. They had a lot of uh, 
the references to 007. I, I think it's pretty cool. And I know that more releases are going to come out because the movie's coming out in 2020, 2021. So yeah. they're definitely going to have some other limited releases. But I guess you, you hit the nail on the head uh, on something. and uh, Or not hit, hit the nail, but something something struck a chord with me. And basically, you keep talking about Omega and Omega. I don't hear you talking about Rolex. And most people, that's kind of something that they want to have in their collection. Is there a reason why you didn't even mention Rolex or do you like them or I mean I don't think there's a reason um I'm good with Rolex if you're buying Rolex for what it is not just because it's Rolex you know Mm -hmm. I have not no beef with Rolex (laughs) well you do have a tutor in your collection would you like to own a a more modern one or even a vintage one something aside from where I really like the the Pepsi GMT from Tudor that's awesome yeah I like that one too the Black Bay uh, is awesome mm-hmm. too. The, yeah, definitely like that watch. So I know the Pepsi is kind of hard to get, right? People be yeah. talking about it. It's one of those things. Yeah. What was that new watch they released at Basel? It was like the P ninety or something like that. Oh, P zero one. That yeah, thing is. Like that. that that was actually one of the questions that I was going to ask. Is in, in your opinion, what's your favorite and least releases of like twenty nineteen from from any and every brand? It doesn't matter. And for me, that was going to be the least favorite aside. Yeah, Ugly that, watch. That is an ugly watch. I mean, look, I I could appreciate everything that they're doing with uh with the protection of the vessel and everything because at the end of the day it was going to be a military watch. So I could respect that that uh they they did something different, right? Mm-hmm. But to this day, now correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they've released it yet. They said they were going to come out with it, but they haven't even put it for sale. So I I haven't heard of it. Because people hate it. It's so ugly, right? They're like, maybe we shouldn't release it. But I, I guarantee, though, if, if they put it out, I guarantee people would jump on it and they would buy it. Just like that, um, you know, Bell and Ross. <laughs> we all hate on it as watch people, but I guarantee yeah. that that thing's going to sell. So, mm-hmm. But yeah, no. So in, in, in your opinion, Matt, what, what's, what's your favorite release of 2019? Obviously, the P01 is probably the least favorite. I mean, this probably isn't going to be that popular of an opinion, but I absolutely love the, the Black Ceramic Perpetual Calendar from AP. And then they just released a white ceramic, and I just think that looks really cool. Mm. Got it. The Royal Oak, right? We're talking mm-hmm. about the Royal Oak. Yeah. Okay, I, I was like, is it Cody 1159? <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> Which a lot of people... So what, it, what is it about? I didn't hate it. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Maybe I um... like the Perpetual Calendar. You know, with the with all the stars on the dial. That's the that's the one I was thinking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure, for sure. I know Timex just came out with something the Scorpio or the. I, I, I'm not comparing Timex and AP in here. But I, I so don't 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 can't wait for this. But I know they released something very similar with like uh, the Libra or I, I don't know, and it just really reminded me of that uh, perpetual um, dial from AP. And speaking of Timex, I don't know if you guys saw that. Uh, Thing that they're doing the, the little release with the pac-man yes i'm loving it, it. i'm That's loving fun. it i'm loving it yeah sure. no it's it's cool I, I really like what timex are doing and i don't know if you you uh saw the news there matt of the batman that they're potentially releasing yeah i saw that as well i saw it on your channel <laughs> oh yeah p uh well both p and myself actually put some some information out there now we're we're hoping this really does happen or else it's going to ruin our credibility but <laughs> <laughs> i think we're pretty confident in and in, in, uh and in coming out so what's what's your take on that do you think it's, it's a smart move or kind of dumb or i mean i like the watch i think it'd be cool if it came out i'm not a big fan of the bracelet but i'm sure that Hundred percent, it's gonna sell out because the of the course Pepsi, both both like releases of the Pepsi sold out, didn't they? They they did. They actually did, like, released it like fast. three or four times. Yeah, I was on yeah. that second wave. I I picked it up. Now, full disclosure here, I have mine for sale already. So I I I I, I bought it and I bought into the hype and I didn't wear it outside of the house. So I did the video. And I just wore it, and that bracelet just just didn't sit with me. And then I changed the 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 band on it or whatever uh and i put a leather one and i was like oh, it just doesn't something about it just didn't speak to me so i put it for sale so i don't know <laughs> anybody <laughs> listening you want to you want to buy it if i still have it yeah. let me know but yeah that bracelet just i don't know i guess it's a little too vintage for me i don't know what it is about it but uh 
but yeah, no, speaking of, you know, me having that watch, we completely forgot to do the wristwatch check. So, Matt, what, what are you wearing today? Uh, I'm wearing my suit. Uh, my Seamaster Professional, which is funny because I'm wearing my pajamas with it. <laughs> I can't just do it on for this. <laughs> That's uh, me too. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm, I'm, I have my pajamas too, and I'm wearing yeah. a watch. So I know, P, you're, I think you're at work. Yeah, yeah I'm correct? at work. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's crazy. So we had this whole thing planned to everybody listening. We we had this whole thing planned. You know, that's that's how we kind of do the podcast. We send out the questions to the guests. And um, P was ready to go, and then he got called into work last minute. So that he's actually at work right now doing this. So hope your boss is not listening, P. I don't think they're nah, watching nah, people. But... <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm safe. I'm in the conference room. And, you know, it's just me by myself. Everybody on the other side of the property. So That's awesome. So, so what, are, what are you wearing, P? Um. Below the sport. Oh, okay. Yes. Is that the, the high blue beat, one? The high blue beat one. movement or yeah, what? yeah, high beat movement. The blue one with the uh, uh, silicone strap. Right. That that's cool. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people sleep on Buloba, and I own two. I own my Precisionist, which is a monster, and I I don't like wearing it too much because like fifty eight millimeters is some crazy yeah, thing. Jesus. Big. It, it's insane. It's insane. So, but it's cool. I mean, none, nonetheless, I was like, you know, the quality built on these things. I don't know if Matt, you ever seen one in the metal, but they're incredible. I mean, for what you're paying, is just all the attention to detail, especially when you put it on a macro. Oh, yeah. uh, on, on my watch, you could see all the carbon fiber dial and the, the curves, and it just it's a really cool watch, but I think they kill it in the size. If it was smaller, I think it would appeal to a larger demographic, but because of the size, it's just a little gaudy, you know? Uh, but I also have my vintage Bulova, the, the railroad approved one, and it's super That's cool. That's a nice piece. That's yeah, a nice it's piece. super cool what they were doing with the with the turning fork and is this the way that it hums you put it next to your ears so i think Bulova has uh, the history for sure and they have a lot of potential to do great things i know they came out with a few releases that probably nobody's even talking about because they're kind of ugly and they're kind of big but they have the potential because they have that movement they have that history um i know a lot of people like that double diver um, that was huge for them as well. And I don't know if you guys know of these two vintage pieces that not a lot of people talk about, but they're their homage pieces to the day date, Rolex day date, and their, their uh, homage piece of the Royal Oak. So if you go on Google or whatever and just put uh, Bulova Super Seville, uh, that will come up as the um, uh, homage of the day date with an actual automatic movement it had an edda in there you can still pick them up on ebay because i've been looking to pick one up even though i'm, I'm being a hypocrite now because i hate homage watches but for whatever reason i like that one and then if you type in buloba royal oak you'll see that it look exactly like a royal oak not sure what movement that one had in it but buloba i don't know man people are sleeping on buloba and and more their vintage pieces but buloba needs to wake up and kind of do a little bit of what Timex is doing. <laughs> Timex is doing things very right. They're they're reading the market very well. Maybe they got to watch uh person. They hired somebody. Maybe that person is changing the trajectory of where Timex is going now, you know, in my opinion. I don't know. Well, Bologna, Bologna, Timex is Bologna. definitely doing everything right, so shoot. Sure. Mm. is owned by Citizen now, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So maybe maybe that's why it gets lost um in there, but Nonetheless, I mean, I I like them a lot. I don't know. Bulova is one of those near and dear brands to my heart. And, and for whatever reason, like Citizen, let's talk about Citizen. It's like they're a great brand. I mean, they're pretty much comparable to Seiko, right? And their eco drive movements are incredible. I mean, they, they're probably the best in the industry that have that solar movement. They're probably, they, they perfected it. That's kind of like their go-to movement. And for whatever reason, Citizen just doesn't speak to me. I don't know why, but... <laughs> yeah, I don't I, think they make a lot of affordable automatics. The yeah, auto- they don't. <laughs> well, Pete, you got, you got a ton of Citizens in your collection, right? Yeah, I got like three Citizens, two, uh, two Eco Drives, and one Quartz Dress Watch. So, so what's... so? I, and I know you own Seiko, which they're pretty much competing with each other well what's, right. what's your take on it i mean who do you think has done it better do you compare them to be the same I mean, as, as far between the, the solar and the eco drive technology citizen clearly got the upper hand on that um yeah, yeah but so. as far as 
uh, design. I think you could go either way, but I prefer Seiko. Right. You know what I mean? But you can go either way. You know what I mean? So. But what's so incredible to me with Seiko, and I, I think you guys could agree because we all love Seiko and have them in our collection, is how incredibly affordable they are. And they have just so many different varieties. I guess one of the things for me personally from Citizen is the sizing. A lot of their watches are really big. They're not they're not moderately sized. Uh, and now if you look at the Seiko 5 line, there's just so many that are, what, 38? millimeters or something like that mm-hmm. and i think that's yeah i think that's perfect not only that but i mean for less than 100 bucks you're getting an automatic movement and it's pretty crazy <laughs> if you really think about it obviously <clears throat> they're trying to position themselves higher now with the seiko 5 and it's not going to be affordable anymore but uh that's a completely different thing i mean how, how do you guys feel about that about seiko trying to be the next I, I don't even know who they're trying to position themselves against i just know that they they got there was a lot of word around the watch industry that um, Seiko got really tired of being perceived as the cheaper uh, watch brand. So I mean, was... I don't I don't necessarily understand that because you know they're making money, obviously. You know what I mean, and I think it's just ridiculous. You know, uh, I I don't think I would be paying that much for a Seiko five what they what they want it for. You know what I mean, so. I just think it's ridiculous. They tripping. Straight up. Do you guys remember that GQ video that Robert Downey Jr. did? Yeah. Yeah. And then I know it's a Seiko at the end. Yeah. I know exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you give me a Seiko? Yeah. (laughs) Right. Well, that's and that's exactly my point. And and I had a story. Um, so one of my coworkers, ex coworkers, because he he quit. Um, I was wearing my, I forgot what I was wearing. SKX. I forgot what I was wearing, but. He from from afar, he's like, yeah, it's a, it's a cool watch, man. What you what you got there? Because he kind of knows I'm a watch guy, and I'm like, oh, this thing right here, oh, this is a Seiko, blah blah. He's like, Seiko, Seiko. He's like, oh, I get it. Yeah, it's only like make calculators or something, kind of like like cheaper watches. And it kind of offended me because I was like, this guy doesn't. I think he's thinking of Casio. But even right. then, Casio is an amazing brand. I mean, uh, man, come on. And, and that's why he's not working with you anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of wristwatch check, I didn't even say my wristwatch check. Uh, if you guys care to know, I am wearing a Seiko Flightmaster, the SNA four eleven. Actually, wore it last night. Nice. Yeah, the flow flighty. You know, for a forty two millimeter watch, it definitely does not wear like a forty two millimeter because the lugs are so close to the case. It wears more like a forty. And for less, I think brand new, less than 250 bucks, you can go wrong with this thing. I mean, it has a, that uh, alarm, internal alarm, of course, it's a chronograph. It tells you the hour, the day. Um, it's just incredible. I think it's a really cool piece. I know a lot of people hate on it because it's too busy. The dial is too busy or maybe because it's a quartz watch. It's It's dumb, in my opinion. But, you know, just like with any watch, it's just a matter of preference. A lot of people like some things people don't like other things right so mm-hmm. <laughs> was there a watch in your collection matt that uh that gets a lot of love from you and a lot of hate from everybody else uh i wouldn't say any of my watches get a lot of hate just maybe because uh, i'm a bigger guy i'm like six one <laughs> so whenever i wear anything decently smaller maybe like 37 i don't know i just remember, yeah, it's nothing that bad, yeah. Yeah, it, well, that's that's the thing. Uh, I know um, a lot of people in today's society, and I'm not talking about watch people. I'm talking about non-watch people. Mm-hmm. They don't like smaller watches. They like the bigger size watches. Uh, but I am glad that the industry is kind of going back to the modest size watches. And, of course, back in the days, everybody was wearing pretty much a dress piece, right? And uh and it was a smaller size and just just like the opposite side of the spectrum for you you talk about you being a bigger guy i'm a small guy i'm only five five so i don't know if anybody knows that but i'm short and when i wear that <laughs> yeah i'm five five man i'm a tiny little mexican i'm a little mexican mm. bean <laughs> but uh yeah when i wear my bulova precision i feel kind of 
dumb i'm stupid because i'm like <laughs> tiny and i'm like this thing probably looks funny on my wrist but at the end of the day you got to walk with confidence and you just got to be confident in yourself and mm-hmm. if you like something you like something and screw everybody else so i don't know <laughs> that's just my take on it what about you p i know you're a, a bigger guy too right yes six feet you know uh i get i get weird looks i wore an, an invicta venom oh and and some of the looks i get from that is like what the hell is this guy doing? But don't nobody outwardly come out and say that because I'm a big guy. I don't know if they think I'm going to jump on or whatever, but <laughs> I ain't, it ain't even like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have a conversation about it. It don't matter, but I, I get some weird looks when I wear that particular watch. I don't wear the big pieces that often, but when I do, it's mostly when I may be angry. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I want to make a statement like, you know, so... <laughs> <laughs> so well, how I big? Th- how, I, th- how, I, th- how, I throw on the Invicta. You know, how big so. is that thing? I know I think it's a monster. Oh, uh, I think it's fifty millimeters. Oh, okay. <laughs> fifty millimeters. Yeah. Yeah, that thing looks crazy. Is that the but one it, that spits uh, poison out? Right. And there <laughs> is that the button on it? <laughs> there it is. There it is. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, like you say, I'm a big guy, so it doesn't look like. You know what I'm saying? Overly big on me, but the way it sits off of my wrist. No, I could be shooting venom. Absolutely, <laughs> that's funny. Well, I know you picked up uh, an Omega Seamaster. That was what thirty. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, how does how does that sit on your wrist? Lovely, nice. Well, how big Lovely. is your wrist? Speaking of, so you like seven, seven, seven and a quarter, seven, seven, about seven and a quarter, something like that. Yeah. Okay. But it's 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 lovely, man. It's lovely. No. I love Omega. There's something about Omega that just makes it so charming. And I think we could all agree because we all have Omegas in our collection and something about, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I, I guess that the cool thing about it is that Omega has the potential of being a Rolex of the world. And it was at one point, I mean, it was bigger than Rolex and right. uh, for whatever reason in today's society, non-watch people, they don't really know Omega or even if they heard of Omega, they don't, they don't compare it to Rolex. They don't I know. know yeah. I know we had this conversation before, but are they overlooked in the watch community? You think? Um, Matt, in the, in the watch community, I wouldn't yeah. say they're overlooked because there is a lot of love for Omega, but just like in regular society, I'd say yeah. Oh, okay. Because like in regular society, people looking for like Rolex and yeah, you know what's you know. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, something that was kind of. Kind of crazy. I'll give you another another little story. So the 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 time that I had that uh, that dinner with my dad. Now, for some of you listening, I've spoken about that before. I don't have a great relationship with him, and we kind of speak very rarely, whatever. But um, we did meet for Christmas last year, and then um, that's when he gave me the bulova off his wrist, and it was very special. But we were talking a little bit about watches, and I told him something about my Omega and he was very surprised and he knew exactly what it was. And he actually had an Omega in his collection back in the like, 60s or something. So it was just incredible to me that his generation, maybe older generation, actually do know a little bit more about Omega than today's generation. And maybe it was because Rolex was just kind of coming up in the world back in the days. I don't know what it is. But yeah, it's unfortunate that... um you know, I had that thing with my nephew, right? I had him on, on, on the show as well on my on my YouTube channel and it really hurt my oh, feelings. Yeah. It hurt my it hurt my ego to be honest with you. So I'm I'm here with my little Mega Speedmaster that I picked up, right? A uh, little vintage piece, automatics. It's not the professional, but it's an Omega Speedmaster nonetheless. And we're we're like I'm showing him my Casios and everything else. And he's ten years old. He's like, Oh, okay, cool, you know? And then he straight up just asked, so do you have a Rolex in your collection? When I said, no, mm. I don't. He, he just completely lost interest and walked away. <laughs> 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 and I, uh, it, it really hurt my feelings. And now at, afterwards, I thought, like, well, he's 10 years old, like, really being hurt by a 10-year-old. But, I mean, kids are very honest. And, and it just kind of really showed me that if, I guess, in society, if you don't have a Rolex – you haven't made it yet or you you're not a watch guy or i don't i don't know what the perspective is from non-watch people but uh what's you guys' take on that do you feel like in your collection if you don't have a rolex non-watch people are going to look at you 
not weird, but think that you haven't made it? No, I don't think like that at all. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's all a state of mind, man. You know what I mean? You can, you can wear, like I got on the Belova now. You know what I'm saying? I feel just as hot as if I would have a Rolex on. Well, almost just as hot. <laughs> yeah. But it's all a state of mind, man. You know? And, and you know, I think that when, when people see you and they know what you're into, they don't necessarily think Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. They just know that you're into timepieces, watches. You know what I mean? So I ain't necessarily worried about that. What's your take on Matt? Yeah, I think that as long as I enjoy the watch that's on my wrist, I think I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. No, I and and I I'm just gonna be transparent. Uh, a few lately, I'm becoming and lately meaning maybe the past year, I've become a lot more humble. But growing up with really nothing and really poor in Mexico and coming here and kind of working hard and and getting more things uh, for myself, I kind of became had that mentality of the flex. And I remember this very clearly. Being a car guy, my first car was a Honda CRX 1985 SI model, and it was an older car. I thought I was super cool. I was like 18 years old, bought it by myself. But from there, I progressed and I got something better and better and better. And by the time I was in my early 20s, I was driving a Honda S2000, you know. And, you know, when I put the top down on that guy and I put a body kit on it and rims, I just thought I was, I made it, you know. And I thought that I was, I was super cool everywhere I went. I got a bunch of looks and, you know, uh, people would start conversations because of that car. So it felt really cool to be looked at that way right and that was kind of it just it's just an ego booster right because for so long i felt like i was a nobody and then when i got a little money and i got a little something people started treating me differently and and looking at me a little better and i could speak to watches being the same i guarantee that if a guy walks in with gucci loafers and looking real sharp and has a bright rolex on his wrist that's solid gold with diamonds regular folks would probably look at him a little different and treat him differently. I I almost guarantee it, you know? So what I'm getting at is that I had that mentality where I had to show off. Why? I really don't know. I just kind of, I guess it was just a self-confidence issue because coming from nothing to kind of having something kind of made me feel that way, you know? But I got married and my wife is the total opposite. And she basically grounded me and said, you're, you're wrong. You're not supposed Mm -hmm. to be that type of person. And now I'm wearing Seikos and I'm cool with it. You know, like I I really want a Rolex in my collection, but it's not as a flex piece. It's more as a personal goal. It's a personal grail. And and really my grail is a day just, I mean, (laughs) that's as, that's as uh, vanilla as you can get with Rolex. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Man, I didn't know this was going to turn into a therapy session. What are you guys doing to me? <laughs> hey, man, it's all good, man. Just be cool. Be cool. Yeah, no, this this whole watch thing, seriously, and it, it all started for me as, as that, you know, as like, uh, it was about flexing. It was about, well, what watch can I get that looks expensive and is cool? But then it turned into a love for, for the mechanical aspect and the, the art aspect and the historic aspect for me. And I, I will hope that it will continue to be that way, and hopefully, I could uh, instill those those uh, thoughts or that 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 spirit into my son as well, because I know he's kind of getting into watches. He's only four, but I want him to know that it's not okay to be flexing, really. You know. <laughs> right. Right. Yes, sir. But uh, it, Matt, I don't know if you want to tell the good people where they could uh, they could find you, they could follow you. Uh, YouTube.com slash Chrono Matt Watches, I believe. I'm also on Instagram, Chrono Matthew. I don't really post on Instagram. <laughs> no, that's cool. I mean, but if we if we could get you a few more followers, that's that's very cool. Now, let me ask you something before we close off, because uh, P and myself don't have a thousand subscribers on our YouTube channel, but you do. So congratulations! But um, when you hit that thousand uh, subscriber mark. Did uh the brand start reaching out to you or did you notice that or uh not really it's no oh okay. I think you gotta be like higher than a thousand I would assume I mean I've gotten a couple of emails but they're pretty sus you know yeah well you yeah. got that piece right you can tell you got yeah that, that piece was... and give... the stern glass is pretty cool 
That's cool. Well, here's here's a sad story, and um, and th- th- this is the whole thing with with our culture, our YouTube, or or I, I I don't know, I don't know how to put it into into words, but I, I'm gonna be honest with you. So what I do for a living is sales, right? So my mm-hmm. my whole approach is kind of marketing, sales. I deal with people, I talk a lot, I, I try to think, make things happen, connect people, and and try to get things approved on my line of work. So I'm kind of taking that same approach in my whole YouTube thing, and I've I think I've been kind of successful in regards to this whole podcast and getting a lot of people on the show and we have a lot of people lined up. So stay tuned. But, um, I've been reaching out a lot to different brands. So different micro brands, a lot of, uh, companies out there. I don't want to name names, but a lot of companies that sell straps and I've been trying to feature them on the show, on the podcast. I've sent a lot of emails to a lot of different people and only one company has gotten back to me. And basically they said, due to the number of subscribers, you're just not good enough for us. Basically, we could give you a promo code, which is pretty cool, you know, and I, I kind of promote that every once in a while. But it, it's kind of crazy to think that um, that they look at somebody just because you don't have the number of subscribers. They don't take you serious. you know. But I get it. It's a, it's a business at the end of the day, right? So that's why I was just kind of curious. You as a thousand subscribers, if it makes a difference, because that's what I'm hoping to get to. And obviously P as well, to oh, at yeah. least a thousand so they know we're a little bit more serious and they know we're being monetized. Maybe that will make a difference, you know? I don't know. So we shall see. But uh, before we close, I, I we started this new thing where we talk about other things aside from watches. So anything that you want to recommend, anything that happened in the week, anything anything aside from watches. So Matt, we'll let you go first. You got anything? Uh, I watched the movie Cabin in the Woods yesterday. Oh, okay. Mm. It was, uh, I think, a horror movie released in 2011. It wasn't that scary. It was very gory, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I watched that movie. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Do you recommend it, then, to other people? Or uh, was sure. it a flop for you? It was okay. I mean, was I would okay. watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a cool premise, though. It was pretty interesting. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I liked it. Do you, are you into horror movies or just kind of? I've kind of gotten into horror movies lately. I really like It and It Part Two. That those good movies. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember right. when the first ones came out in the nineties. I was I was a, a younger younger guy, and I, I remember Pennywise. He never really scared me, but I thought it was a really well, the cool new Pennywise. Is a lot scarier than the old one. Mm. I I agree. You know, and and the thing about re-releases is that a lot of times they kind of kill the movies but for me i think they made it better so in my opinion oh yeah yeah p well uh yesterday i had the opportunity finally uh me and the family went out and saw joker oh Oh, that's really and uh and uh gemini man will smith and joker was outstanding really you know i i I definitely recommend Joker and Gemini Man has gotten a lot of slack. I guess because it, it didn't sell like it should sell for a Will Smith movie in the box office, but it was pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. But Joker. So I, mm, mm, mm. I hear a lot of controversy with that whole Joker thing. And I don't know if you guys saw there was a website floating around um, talking about a Russian guy committing suicide on like a live stream i don't know if it was facebook or something he kind of referenced something about suicide and joker and mm. it's just it's just kind of crazy i mean we live in a society where we're influenced by everything and it's just very insane and i don't think it's it's a new thing i think it's been around for many years as far as uh, influencing people and things in the media but now that social media is readily available to everybody now we hear about it you know but right in your opinion, was it that kind of movie where you think it may influence people in a wrong way? It could. It could. I don't see how it could. See, the the, 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 the thing about Joker, and I hope this is not a spoiler, is it's the age-old story of guy gets bullied. Guy gets tired of getting bullied, so he acts. You know what I Correct. mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so it's kind of like, in, in that sense, you kind of feel for Joker, I guess. Like, Damn, you know what I'm saying? They beat us. They did all kind of stuff to him, but and then you find out stuff about that you really shouldn't know about your family. But then it's like you get lied to, and it's it's just the age old story, and that's just what happens when people just snap. They get tired. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, but 
I don't know if that's a, this is just my opinion. And in and, and today's society with so many crazy things going on, is this putting out a movie about being bullied and having retaliation against those bullies. I'm not really sure if that's a positive message. The, I understand. It's not, it's not, but like everything that you see and everything that you hear, like it, it comes to a point in time where you have to understand that it's entertainment. And if you can't take that type of entertainment, then maybe you shouldn't watch it or maybe you shouldn't listen to it. Well, or maybe you should have somebody in your life to say, look, you know, this ain't good for you. you well, here's I mean? the thing. Here's the thing that, that you and I were, were adults, right? And, and Matthew, of course, he's an adult now. But uh, uh, there's, I don't want to say irresponsible people out there, but there's people that maybe are not as mature. And I'll give you an example. My cousin, he's like in his early 20s and he had a kid when he was young. His son, I think it's five or six. He took him to go see Joker. So no, no. I was just yeah, kind of scratching my head. No, why? I asked him, I'm like, why did you do that? And he was promoting it on Instagram too. Oh, we came. I'm like, why did you take your son to go see that movie? Oh, because he wanted to see it. I was like, oh, so if he wants to go watch a porn, are you? Well, no, there's limits. And I'm like, well, I just left it at that. But I'm like, look, as a, as a responsible parent, maybe that's not the type of movie you should go out and see but to your point p yes if you have the mindset that you're kind of weak or you don't see things as entertainment maybe you shouldn't go see this movie right. but unfortunately man we live in a society and i'm not just talking the u.s here i'm talking worldwide where people are just crazy and they see a lot of things a little different and i'll, I'll give you another example where i live uh about two miles away from here uh, in the school, there was some bullying of a, of a kid. Two guys were bullying this kid, and they went to the school, and they told him that he was being bullied. They just completely ignored him, and it was a reoccurring thing. Well, next thing you know, they had it. This was about two months ago. They, they These two bullies ganged up on the kid, and they were, he was like 13, 12. They ganged up on the kid. They were punching him, whatever. Well, the, the kid tripped or fell, and he, let, he hit his head on like an edge or something, mm. and he was in a coma for about a week or something and he passed away so wow. it's just it is one of those things and now people are up in arms and like saying things to the school like we told you so you ignored it so the principal i don't get fired some people got reprimanded but what do you do with the life of this poor kid you know and it's like bullying is a, it's a real thing a real epidemic i i went through it as a little kid not probably maybe not as bad as other people but i i've gone through it personally and it sucks you I feel think helpless we all been through it. i think we all been through it you know? matt have you yeah, I would say everyone has. Yeah. Well, but it's, it's, it's different. I'm a 45 year old guy. So, bullying back when I was younger was like, you know, if my mother knew I was getting bullied, my mother made me get out there and fight the bully. Really? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you don't run from nobody. You know what I mean? And that gave me more like confidence knowing that, you know what I'm saying? She would do that. You know what I mean? Encourage you to do that. Right. Encourage you to defend yourself. Got right. It. You know what I mean? So, but it's different now with social media and and the the state of the world is kind of I don't know what word to use for it. It's kind of messy. You know what I mean? So it's different now. It is. Well, are things a little more? I mean, P. A lot of crazy stuff and shootings and things like that really happen here in the U.S. Mostly, we don't hear anything in Canada. Canada, everybody seems very friendly. So. How are things for you over there, Matt? I mean, you live in Canada, so do you see things being a little different, a little more calm? Well, I never got bullied in the sense of, like, being up or anything like that. But it's, like, with social media, before social media, you wouldn't know that you're, like, getting excluded. But then with social media, you, you, you're you always going to know because everything's online. Yeah. So it's kind of bad in that sense, but I don't think I had it that bad, you know? I never got bullied, bullied. Well, cyberbullying is a, is a real thing because I, I personally think that messing with somebody's emotions is probably even worse than messing with somebody physically. Because right. when you mess with somebody physically, it gets to the point where you retaliate, maybe and you get pissed off and you punch somebody. But when it's a world of war of the words and, and that person is smarter than you or they, they think faster than you and you can't come up with with funny things to say or, or hurtful things to say, then that's why a lot of teens have committed suicide as well uh, because of this whole social media thing, right? So it's, it, I'm starting to get very philosophical here, but I do have a little kid and I, I've been thinking a lot about 
where this world is heading and, and what I can do to to kind of, I don't want to say shield him because I want him to be strong. I don't want to put him in a bubble, but it's crazy because this kind of stuff didn't exist when I was growing up, you know? Right. So, yeah, I, have a, I have a 14 year old daughter and I send her to school every day just thinking like, you know, I hope she don't get caught up in a situation like that. But nine times out of 10, it's going to happen and she's going to have to respond. So, you know, I'm teaching her the right way to try to go about these things. You know what I mean? That's you all know, you can do. And, That's all you can do as long as her, uh, but it's, she's it's, aware of her surroundings. It's it's worrying though. It's it's really worrying. That's one of the things that like stress me out about about everything in my life. That one particular situation that I know is going to happen and how she's going to handle it. You know hmm. so. Yeah, well, maybe that's why we talk about watches and we just surround ourselves with these watches. Maybe this is an escapement. At least for me, it is. I know right. I have a lot of stress in my work and, you know, all the world things going on. The, the watches really take me to a different place where it's it's just a watch. I mean, it's right. really, if you think about it, it's just a thing that tells time. And a lot of times it doesn't even tell it correctly, but it's just a thing, you know? So. Right. I don't know, yeah. but for me, I guess let me wrap things up. Uh, one movie that well, I've been—we've been watching a lot of movies lately. I don't know why, but it's pretty cool. We've just rented Us, so the the Peel oh, movie. The Peel movie. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, man, it was pretty good. Pretty. Yeah, good. yeah, it was pretty. Yeah. Good. I, I was a little confused with the more digging I did, and I don't want to spoil anything. I don't know if people haven't seen it, but I I recommend it. It was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. There was there was a lot of things that didn't really make sense, but at the end of the day, it just like if you look at the movie as a whole, it just doesn't. It's not real, you know. But uh, very suspenseful. Very, it, it just makes you think, right? Like, what if the government was doing things like that, and and how would you react in that situation? And, and it, it, I know it has a deeper meaning than just whatever was there. And it was a lot of people are talking about. Uh, well, I don't want to spoil it, but anyways, yeah, it's, it's a good movie. Go, it's go watch it. I, rec- I recommend. It. Matt, did, have you watched that one? I've yeah, I've seen, it. seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. So P has seen it. Matt, did you? I, I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> no, I, I haven't seen it. <laughs> I, well, now since you've been getting kind of into scary movies, I recommend it. It's not scary, but it's definitely suspenseful. So I, I recommend it. You, you're if you if you like his first movie. Uh, what was the first movie? Oh, get, out. get 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 Out. Get Out. Get Out. So I don't know if yeah. you guys watched that, but that was a that great was good movie. Too. Yes. Wait, have you seen it, Matt? Yeah, I've seen Get Out. Okay, so if you like that one, you're definitely going to like this one. It's not maybe as good as that, but it's different. You know, it's different in a way that it. I think you're going to like it. And and uh, last night we actually saw The Upside, the one with Kevin Hart and uh, Brian Cranston. That? How was that? Was that good? My wife loved it. And for whatever reason, for me, it was it was a good story. It was different from what I'm used to seeing from Kevin Hart. I mean, he had some funny moments in there, but it was very heartfelt, and I know he really had to act in this movie, so I think they did pretty well, and their chemistry was good on screen. And then to think that this story was actually based on a true story made it that much better. Mm. But to me, there was a few things, and I don't want to spoil it, but there was a few things at the end that I was like, well, they should have given it a little bit more closure, and I would have been happier. But overall, it it was a pretty good movie, not bad. Okay, cool. I got to check that out. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so that's that's all I got on my end. Anything else you guys want to talk about, or you guys good? <laughs> no, we're good. You good? All right, good. cool. Well, good. this has been episode nine. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for uh, talking to us. We we we've been planning this for a long time, and yeah. you're <laughs> more than welcome to come uh, anytime and just kind of hang out. And hopefully, everybody listening, you enjoyed this episode. Um, you know, we. For everybody that doesn't know, we do this on, on Sundays typically, so our families are probably waiting for us to go do things or go hang out. But well, I'm gonna go back to sleep after this. <laughs> okay, there you go. Mm. Perfect. <laughs> Matt's gonna go back to That's sleep. I'm up. gonna go to my daddy duties and P's gonna go back to work. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully he still has a job after this. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, hey, well, thank you so much. And you can find me on YouTube, SoCal Watch Reviews, and Instagram. Same thing, SoCal Watch Reviews. P uh, Ross Wristwatch Love YouTube and uh, Instagram and Facebook. Perfect. That's that's where he's at. So, <laughs> so yeah. No thanks uh, for everybody. Thanks for listening. As always, my friends, remember stay humble. <laughs>